Sir, could you signal a B4? Lieutenant Swift, 48. Break his light. Go. Go. Have a seat. What are you doing? You want to go to the chair, don't you? 
What are you trying to break your light with? This is one of your admin say guys, ain't it? What is the problem, man? Hey, Frisbee. I'm going to get him out so you can talk to him. So we talk to him. Have a little conversation. We'll find out why he's trying to bust his light out. Hey, Frisbee. I need to steal your keys. Come here, back up. Squat down. Turn around. There you go. Nope, the other way, buddy. The other way. Thumbs up. In here. There you go. Have a seat in your bunk. Fifteen. Fifteen. She can't hear me. Problem. For what? What For what? Do you understand? We don't got bed space right now. You're going the long term, correct? How come you want to go right now? I want to go around, get this shit over and done with. Okay. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be maybe a week, but we're gonna get you over there as soon as we can. I just came, gave you some good news. You wanted to talk to your counselor from the streets. They're gonna be coming in and talk to you. So what's going on, man? I don't know, man. You don't know? I might as well just bring me out because I'm going to keep doing it. Okay. So you're saying you want to go in the chair? Yeah, basically. What, what, how's that going to help? Just calm me down better. You think it'll calm me down? Is there anything else we can do besides that to try to help calm me down? Sure. It's up to y'all, man. Well, I know. I don't want you destroying my room, though. That's why I say you might as well just pick me in that room. Because you're going to keep trying to destroy the room? What do you think, LT? I don't think you know. you're going to keep destroying the room, huh? Well, I don't want the room to tore up. We stick them in there, folks. I thought you was Anderson. Westside, now talk, cuz. What you mean? They're going to blur that out anyway, son. Shackles. You got some layer shackles. I'm going to stick them in the chair. Go to the chair. Yeah, we can switch out. I'm not going to stand with them.
Forty-seven zero eight. Like I said, West Side uh, all good nap time. Twenty-one hundred all good size. Okay. You know what all good is? Seven hundred. Yeah. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Key signal six HC. You advised uh, member of HC to signal eight. Nap time. Excuse me. Give HC you a call and have somebody come down and signal eight so we can check restraints. Stay up, Derek. Do that 65 to life, cuz. What you do? Hey, free Hoover, too. Seven folks in the motherfucking world, bro. Too greasy, you too ATL, stay up. Chair, it's 1220. Okay. What's your first name? Austin. Okay. All right. Came in voluntarily. Um, you gonna let us know when you want to come out? I guess so. I'll tell you. All right. I'll come and check on you in a little bit. All right. All right. Let me know. I need to come back. I will. Okay. Thank you. Basically, what was going on is he was in his room trying to destroy. Basically, what was going on is he was uh, trying to destroy his room, um, pulling the light switch down and just destroying property. So he, we went into the cell, tried to find out what was going on with him. He said, I'm, "Unless you put me in the restraint chair, I'm going to keep acting up, keep tearing stuff up." So basically, this is voluntary. He's allowing himself to go in there in order to uh, avoid destroying the property. So. He, he was, as you can see, he went in pretty peacefully and uh, we're making sure our property isn't getting destroyed, which he'll end up having to pay for if we have to do restitution on it. So I told him, I said, he can come out anytime he wants since he went in voluntarily. So I'm going to check on him in a little bit and see if he wants to come out. So how often does uh, the chair happen? Um, we don't use it very often. It's kind of like, um, I mean, we can do it involuntarily where if they need to go in there because they are destroying property, uh, we can take care of it that way. Um, but occasionally we will have somebody who asks if they can go in it just to kind of calm down a little bit so we can use it as a tool that way too. As you can see, medical staff had to come down. They make sure that the restraints aren't on too tight. We do checks on them every hour. But in his case, since he's voluntary, if he asks me if he can come out, I'm going to go ahead and authorize him to come out. How long has he been in segregation? Um, he's only been in segregation about a week or so. Um, he was involved in an incident where there was assault on an officer, and that's why he's down here right now. So how long will he remain in segregation? Um, well, it, it, it really depends upon his behavior. We have to do a review, and it, it's kind of hard to tell right now. It depends on how his behavior continues. If he's going to continue to destroy property and things like that, then we have to do disciplinary action on him, and, and, and that could extend his stay. But um, basically, our goal is to try to get people out of segregation as quickly as possible back in the general population so that they can continue in their programs and try to complete and get home, finish everything they got to do and get home. How common is this to have something like this happen? Um, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, it probably doesn't even happen 
once every two weeks or so. I mean, we, we try to use the restraint chair as a last resort if we can't get the situation under control peacefully. and get started. Right. Mr. Arnold, uh, begin by telling us why you are in the Department of Corrections. Yeah, I've seen here for uh, burglary and escape. Uh, what did you burgle? A uh, house. <laughs> Cut off. Whose I, house was it? I don't know. Just a, a random house? What did you take? TV, a couple game systems, and some liquor. How'd you get caught? I was uh, running down the street with the TV. How big of a TV was it? 46 inch. Wow. How big was it? 46 inch. Oh my goodness. You were easy to spot then. Yeah. Escape, would you, were you on house arrest? Yeah. You I just cut off your band? Yeah. What, why, why did you cut it off? Because I got, uh, I got caught having sex in the school bathroom and I got expelled. That was a violation. So, I went so then you cut it off and took off? Why were you having sex in the school bathroom? Because I was on house arrest and uh, I, I, my mama wouldn't let the girl come to my house. So. so it was consensual, it was your girlfriend or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Very romantic. <laughs> <coughs> All right, talk about some of the things uh, that you've learned here. Uh, that's going to make you a better person when you leave here. I learned how to control my anger and bite my tongue and stuff in that nature. What does that mean, bite my tongue? Like, stop, like, for instance, like, the staff, like, if I feel like they're trying to be funny, instead of me cussing them out, I just hold it and hold my tongue, like, not say nothing, just walk away. So you've learned to be quiet and walk away from issues rather than to yeah. fight back or say something negative. Very good. Uh, what are some of the other group, the programs or groups you've completed? Uh, like why try? Tell me, what was your favorite metaphor? Uh, jumping the hurdles. Why? Because I feel like I jumped a lot of hurdles while while I was in here. What are some of the hurdles you've jumped? Uh, like uh, basically like holding my tongue, controlling my anger, and going to school. I used to hate going to school, but now I really don't mind going to school. Mr. Stowell, how's he doing in school? Calendra, you have a 4.0 behavior average. You've earned some credits while here. You know how many? I think like three. You've earned three, and you have the potential to earn two more before you leave. How many had you earned before you came here? Zero. Zero? Why? So I wasn't going to school. Like I said, I, I didn't like going to school, period. And I just never had a good interest. When I was younger, I did, but now I really don't. Let me <coughs> ask you this. Now that you've realized some success, will you be able to carry that over back to the public school? Yeah. I, I think, like, when I go back to school, I'll probably uh, stay, stay in classes more and do my work as much as I can. When you first came to us, we had a little bit of trouble keeping you in class. Yeah. What changed? I just got tired of sitting here wasting my time. You know, if you stand if you're in here, you might as well get something out of it. There was a period of time where I had to go looking for you in the hallways because you would just leave class without permission. But that's been quite a while ago, and you've done a good job. You've earned credits. You maintain a solid behavior average. What high school do you plan on going to when you leave? Uh, probably how Community High School. That's where you went before you came here, right? Okay. Well, you'll have a move-in case conference when you return. You're going to have to let them know what are things that have helped you while you were here because you have an individual education plan. And you have some goals that you've reached, so that's great. And there's have been accommodations that have helped you reach those goals. So you'll need to communicate to those folks and we can help participate in that conference. What has been helpful while you've been here? You just need to let them know that, okay? Yeah. All right. 
a while back you received a conduct report for assault on a student. <clears throat> uh, you pleaded not guilty, although you were found guilty. Your plea was not guilty to the hearing board. Do you uh, still maintain that you were not guilty, that you did not assault that student? Yeah, I was guilty. Okay, thank you. I was looking at some of your aftercare uh, plan calendar, and what I noticed is that it says that you may have ha had a substance abuse problem. Did you have a substance abuse problem prior to coming here? Yeah, I, I had a substance abuse problem. What kind of drugs were you taking? Uh, a bomb of fluid and uh, alcohol and marijuana. Um, do you still want to do in bombing fluid? No, not. Or any of the other? I really don't have a great desire for drugs anymore because I didn't been so long without them, so. Do you like being clear-headed versus yeah. being high? Um, it, it's going to be imperative that you go to counseling for, for substance abuse. You know, because it's a lot easier when you're on the streets to get uh, drugs and marijuana and, and alcohol to keep you clean. Do you um, have some positive peers picked out? Any yeah. kind of programs that you're that you're going to attend? Yeah, when I get out, I'm gonna try to get a job and maybe go to the YMCA in my spare time. Is that going to see a mentor or just to work out? Uh, kind of both, because I have a mentor already. Uh-huh. Over the, at YMCA? No, nah, he's, uh, he's a police officer. Oh, you have a mentor already? Okay, great. With the Marin County Therapy, you can do participate in the AIM program? Yeah. Okay. I have a, a question I want to ask Mr. Stillwell. I saw in his packet that in 2010 he was at the Indiana Developmental Training Center. Mm -hmm. Would there be a purpose for him to continue that kind of a program or has that already been resolved and is not no, not any longer needed? It's my understanding that's been resolved okay. when he went to Thomas Howe. Okay, very good. And that would be a decision um, the public school would need to make if okay. for whatever reason you get there and you're not as successful as you should be. You remember when you were at the training center, developmental yes. training center? So just a couple of years ago, not quite that long. Uh, the reason I ask that question is because they can be very, very helpful to you. And so if when you were involved in that program before, you felt like it was helpful to you? Yes. When you leave, if you d develop those same kinds of needs, that program is still available to you. Okay. Okay. Arnold, what's your long-term goals? What What are your career goals? <clears throat> well, I want to be a gynecologist. A what? A gynecologist. A who? <laughs> a Did cosmetologist or a gynecologist? A gynecologist. I get them kind of. Mixed. You know what a gynecologist is? Yeah. What is? The deliver babies. Oh, OBGYN. That'd be a little bit easier. We're going to have to buckle down and get some credits and get to studying. Yeah, A lot of science and math. <laughs> get to studying. Do you have a backup plan in case med school doesn't work out? Uh, I, I want to be a barber if that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, can we get back to the high school, work Bar with your, uh, your aftercare? and see what's really uh, ideal and what's the best options for you. Uh, I know there are some, some trade schools. There's one in Indianapolis, a barber school, isn't there? Yes. Hmm. Who are you going to live with? My mother. Your mom? Okay. Is that your uh, adoptive mother? Yes. Okay. Very good. That's who you were living with before. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Anyone on the panel? Do you have any questions for us? Nope. You do not? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have you leave the room so we can have a discussion before we take our vote, okay? All right. All right. We'll see you back in a minute.
Okay. You just said a, gyna a gynecologist? <laughs> I thought, I thought he meant cosmetologist, that's why I didn't ask. Oh, because you're doing like barber school? It's in his no. packet that that's what he would like to do, become a barber. Yeah, you Honey, that's Sorry. So he made it through college and then went to school? No, he went to school. He went to school. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some bullying and some extortion, that you were threatening kids for stuff. And um, there were kids that were threatening to retaliate against you, and there were kids that were scared of you. So we were trying to sort all that out, so we brought you down there. And in the investigation, they never really found either way, documented yes or no. That was just kind of a lot of talk. So what we decided to do was work with you down there to finish your program and make sure that we gave you a lot of support and finished out your program. So I um, wanted to make sure you understood that. You've done well down there, except for the one day that you you climbed the fence and didn't come in off the rec pad. and. Um, that was really your only bad choice you made down there. So you've done well down there. Do you have any questions about that process? Because that's my only concern is that we never really got a good understanding of if you were doing those things or not. So if you, do, if you were doing those things um, and you go back out and you're a kid that bullies and threatens people to take their things, then you go out to a public high school and you do that, then what kind of problems is that going to cause you? Probably get arrested right so I want to make sure you've uh, we've done as best as we can to teach you not to do that yeah. so what can you say about that uh, when I get out uh, I don't think I'm, I'm not gonna have a desire to bully and extort people for things I don't know I just I guess I learned that while I was in here but I didn't think I broke the habit what made you fall into it in here uh, I've seen everybody else doing it, and I wanted to have what they had, so I did what they did. So what if you want what the other kids have at how? I'm going to work for it. Okay. Are you going to have people that, if you don't understand how to get it, are you going to have people that you can call and talk to and use appropriate means? Like, here, you could have come to staff. You could have come to us and said, you know, there are things that I... I don't understand are there things that I need help with here or things that I see other kids have that I don't have but you didn't choose to come to us so what's going to make you choose to go to people for help when you get out? When I go home I, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a good support system to support me. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Ms. Price. Go ahead. Uh, I vote to approve. I agree. I vote to approve. I agree. I vote to approve. Congratulations, Mr. Arnold. You have your promotion to release. Thank you. Thank you. I have some questions for you before you leave. There have been some staff who have helped you since you've been here. Would you like to share with us their names? Uh, Johnson. Which Johnson? Uh, short, light skin. E. Johnson. Ernest Johnson. Yeah. Man, he helped me a lot and kept me okay. out of trouble. And Robinson. Down in okay. How about okay. counselors? Uh, Ms. Price, okay. Blake. And teachers? Uh, McIntyre and the Hargit, the gym teacher. Okay, before you leave, I'm just going to repeat something that you said here that I thought was noteworthy and I wrote it down. You said, I will work for it. Remember you said that. Because if you keep that thought in your head, you'll do well. Congratulations. Good job, Arnold. Did you want to shake our hand? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Like your hair. It's like, oh, God. Congratulations. Good job.
Excited and nervous, all at the same time. You gonna miss this place? No. Okay. I'm never gonna miss this place. I hate it here. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Here's go. Great. You almost look cute. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. Stop. 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 Nothing much. I like your outfit. I don't. Uh, your hair has grown. I know. I got taller too. Or you yeah, got shorter. Yeah, you are tall. No, I ain't got shorter. <laughs> now, how about that? Oh, let me hug you again. It's good to see you. I hope you do right. I am. Okay, then. So you ready to go home? Yep. You gonna do things different? We gotta talk about this now. You gonna do things different? Yeah. You gonna, I mean, your way of thinking, how is it now? Positive. Positive. So you do know if you, I mean, if anything go wrong, you know I'm there, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not your friend, I'm your mother, okay? You need to talk, we, we can talk. There's nothing we can't talk about, okay? I just want you to come home, I want you to do What's right? I'm getting emotional. But I want you to do what's right. I want you to come home and end up back in here. Because this ain't the place you need to be. You need to be with me. Because I'm your mother. Dear, not. I want to raise you. Not them. And I, I love all my kids. And I love you too. This ain't where I want to come and see my child. This ain't where I want to come and greet you and hug you and tell you I love you. I want to be able to wake up and come to you and say I love you. I don't want to have to travel 20 miles to tell you that. And I do want you to do what's right. And if you feel like you get ready to do wrong, come and talk to me, okay? Don't don't just go and do what everybody else wants you to do. You do what you know that I want you to do what's right that's going to keep you out of here, okay? I love you, and I want you home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, it was nice to meet you. How do you feel? Feel good. They have a free man. I'm a free man. We're going here down to E Complex. We had to lock up a couple of kids in segregation for battery on a fender. They they jumped in the fender. There's three of them, so we're going to take them to SIG. So what did uh, what did the report say? I mean, they just for some reason had it out for this kid. And... Uh, we have no clue of what the motive was. So uh, what do you expect their reaction is going to be when they see you walking in? You never can tell. You never know. Yeah, you guys don't seem nervous. Do you get used to this? Or tell me what your feelings are as you're getting ready to walk in, because these kids can be involved. Yes. It's, it's everyday rotation. Now you just, you just, you know, you go do it, and it's pretty much the same every time. You don't know what to expect, so you're just ready for anything. Yeah, they have. They have what? They have battered staff on occasion, so you just don't expect anything. Be ready. Cox, Brady, Cox in room six. All three of you are in the same room. They're going to say you mark They just woke us up, I don't know. They're going to say
31, 35. 48, 35. Air ride with those three offenders. Come here. What you gonna say for? Yeah, we don't care. We shit the fuck. You don't have a clue what you're gonna say for? Hell no, I ain't this shit. Yeah, I'll let you know when we get over here. All three going to SIG, no physical force. No physical force. I just saw you. I just saw you. So I got Cox, Brady, and Picard. Yep. Cox, Brady, and Picard. Okay. No physical force? None. Okay. Yeah, they got Cox, Brady, and Picard. You guys probably all have sheets, don't you? He has to see the doctor? Yeah, the yes. psychiatrist. He's only here once a week. We'll we'll get him locked in. You can get him. Yeah, we get we get him locked in down there and we'll bring him back. <coughs> no injuries, no PRPs. Okay, Mr. Cox, Open that door for him. Open that door. Look at his expression. <laughs> it says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. What's next going to be?
Sales at all. What you do, Brady? I don't Oh, sorry. You're gonna take what? Sorry, one, two. Go ahead. All right. Twenty-seven. Okay. Next month on the twenty-seven. Next month. Okay. And you? I'm seventeen. So obviously, uh, we. Uh, if you could go ahead and just give me your name. Brandon Cox. Brandon Cox. Nathan Brady. I'm sorry. Nathan Brady. Nathan Brady. Yeah. So obviously, you guys were brought down here for a reason. You want to talk about what you did? What happened? We don't know yet. We just. Oh, they can't wake us up out the bed and said that we were going to say it. We usually know what we did because we usually go right when we do it, but we ain't did nothing yet. Yeah, because that's what I thought when they walked in. Obviously, you'd know you were going to be taken somewhere, right? Mm. So I hear there was a battery yesterday. Do you know anything about that? They said we battered somebody, but I don't know. I don't think they got the wrong people, so. So you didn't buy the battery in huh. Every time I go to SIG, I admit for what I do, and I ain't do nothing this time. I always admit if I get in a fight or something. So you've been in SAG before? Yeah, I've been here for two and a half years. You've been yeah, in this place. You've been in this prison two and a half years? Yes, ma'am. What'd you do to get in here in the first place? Uh, grand Theft Auto and uh, escape and assault and run away and stuff. So when you were on the outside before you came here in the Pendleton room and when you 
you know, when you're in the midst of Grand Theft Auto or Escape, do you think about what you're doing before you do it, or? I what thought about I thought about what I was doing, but I was I was um, I had friends around and stuff trying to impress people. But I was having fun at the same time, so I didn't think about coming here or nothing. So what is it? You just think you won't get caught or just do it for fun? Or? I was doing it for fun, but I was doing it all the time and I never got caught, so I just was getting caught wasn't on my mind because I hardly ever got caught. How old were you when you first started getting in trouble? Do you remember? Like 11. How do you get in trouble when you're 11? I don't know. I mean, was there something going on at home that... I used to, I started getting in trouble because I used to run away a lot and stuff when I was little. What were you running from? Just everything. I used to run away to friends' houses and stuff, and then they called the cops and I'd go to juvenile and stuff. But I always got out, and then when I turned 13 and stuff, I started doing other stuff, like major stuff, stealing and stuff. So it just kind of got worse over the years? Yeah. Now that you've been here two and a half years, if you get out, are you gonna stay straight? Yeah, I'm trying to, that's why I don't want to go home yet, because I ain't ready. I want to wait until I learn my whole lesson so I don't try, so I don't come back or nothing. Because when you get out, you're gonna be 18, right? Yeah. What happens if you start going back to your old ways once you're out? I'm not going back to my old ways. So I don't want to come here for a long time again. Nathan, so why do you think you're, why do you think they came and got you? They said battery. They didn't do nothing though. So why would they identify you, Keith? Because they put the time out for it, but they said we're the only ones on the walks going to happen, so I think it was us. Do you know who was battered? Or did you hear anything about it? I mean, I know you guys kind of know everything that goes on everywhere. I don't know who got battered, but I didn't know who done it. What said we done it. I don't even care. I tell him if I'm done. So what'd you hear about the kid that got battered? What happened to him? He says somebody hit him in his mouth. He had to get stitches. So, I don't know. so how long have you been in Pendleton? Three years. You've been here three years. Yep. And you're 18. Well, I turned 18 31st. So you were 15 when you came here. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do on the outside then, right here? Everything. Stupid stuff, really. Are you sorry about what you did now? Or? Yeah, I am, but can't take it back now, though. So how much longer do you think you're going to be here? Mm. Hopefully not long. I'm going to try to get a court date. Go on, but... Mm. So what's it like being locked up? Obviously, you guys didn't know each other before you came here, right? So, you know, if somebody's watching, some kid out there's watching and, you know, he's a little, you know, out there gangbanging and running the streets thinking it's cool, what would you want to say to somebody watching this from somebody on the inside? The same place would come on me. I'd try to be a role model. You'd try what? Be a role model, I'd, I'd tell him what it was like here. Yeah. I wouldn't try to scare him, but I was trying to kind of scare him at the same time so he wouldn't want to come here and so. stuff. So I don't think nobody would have come here. Would that have helped you, do you think? What would have helped keep you out of a place like Pendleton? I never, if I had like a scared tactic, like where I came here and saw what it was like, I never knew what it was like, I just came and I was stuck here. Then I adapted to an environment and I got institutionalized. So that's one of the reasons we do the shows we do is so other kids can see what it's like from your point of view. So what would you want to tell them? What would you say? The same place to be on me. Just without your family, it's rough being here, really. Especially when you've been locked up for years, it's hard to go home in this facility. You always get pulled down negative stuff by negative periods. Not the place to be, really. You know, we've talked to other kids who've been here in Pendleton, who've gotten out and you've done pretty well, you know, for like four months. Yeah. And then other gang members start coming around again and they get lured back into the same stuff. Are you afraid that once you get out that life will be the same on the outside? No, I think I'm, I'm more mature than what I was. I think I can handle it now. I'm about to be a grown man and stuff, so I got I gotta look at life different instead of being just all about fun a little kid. I'm trying to I'm gonna go to back to school and get my I got my GED, but I'm gonna go back to school and get my uh, 
high school diploma, I could get a job and stuff, go to college. What would you want people to know about you guys that you think they don't know now? Because people who drive by this facility probably think, you know, there's some bad kids in there. What do you think people don't know about you? What would you want them to know? Not, not everybody bad. I, I ain't gonna lie, I was bad when I first got here because I was kind of upset that I was in here, but after a while, being bad ain't gonna get you out, so you just gotta be cool. I've been cool, I ain't been to Seg on her for a while. So how do you feel about being in Seg Um, I wanna know what I did, kinda, so I, mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to get a visit this weekend, I ain't trying to be down here a while for my visit. Who's supposed to visit? My mom, my sister, my grandma, my stepdad. So you get visitation? Yeah. How often do you see your family? Almost every weekend, every other weekend. Sometimes through the week. That's pretty rare from what I've seen. A lot of kids don't get visits at all. I'm from Evansville, so it's kind of a long drive, too. But they come see you. How do you feel about them seeing you like this? I don't like them seeing me like this, but my mom, she just got out of prison like three months ago, so I used to have to visit her like this, so she kind of know where I'm coming from and stuff. So what's what's that like watching a family member go to prison? What's, it, that, what's that do to you as a kid? I'm not saying I follow my parents. Well, I did kind of follow my parents' footsteps and stuff because they were in the family because my dad in prison now, and he'd been there twice, and my mom just got out, and she was there for five years, and now I'm in here. The only person... Like my big sister, she never got in trouble yet. And I'm kind of proud of her that she didn't follow me. So my little sister didn't either, or my little brother. They ain't got in trouble. I hope they don't. So watching them go through that didn't prevent you from ending up someplace like this, does that? Yeah, because I got, a, my, one of my little brothers passed away when he was 13. He be 13 now, he drowned, and I used to look out for him, and I never started really, like I got in trouble and stuff, but then I started staying out of trouble trying to look out for him, and then when he died, I started getting in trouble again. Just seems like a lot of you guys that we talk to, by the time you get to Pendleton, a lot of stuff has happened in your life before this. A lot of stuff. And almost everyone tells us it started young. So what can, what can any adults do from early on to help kids who, you know, start getting in trouble young? I don't, I don't blame it on my parents, but when I started seeing the first side of drugs and, like, people get battered and stuff, it was from my family and stuff, so I kind of grew up around it, and then I was like, I didn't know that it was bad because I was so young, so I did the stuff, and then by the time I knew it was something bad, I already had it in my bloodstream, and I was getting in trouble for it. Pretty loud down here, huh? Yeah. That kid don't ever want to go home. That's why he yelling. Really? Yeah, he act up all the time. He got to stay down here until he leaves. You know, we've, we've talked to other kids who actually wanted to come in to say, like got in trouble on purpose to come down to say, because they were afraid they were going to get beat up. Yeah, and they be getting their food took and stuff. That's not me. I don't have to worry about that. I don't like coming to say, but I always end up coming. I don't know what it is. So anything else you want to say, you want people to know how you feel about where you are, what your life is like? This ain't the right place to come from. You don't want to come here. You think kids out there think it's maybe a badge of honor to say you serve time in some place like Pendleton? Some people, they probably do. Until they come here. Until they see what it's really like. Do you have any remorse at all for you know, any of your victims on the outside, whether, you know, rob somebody or beat somebody up, I mean, do you feel remorse? Have you had time to think about it? I've never thought about it, but, yeah, I got remorse though for what I've done again. So you don't think about it when you're doing it, but then as time goes on? Yeah, you think about it once you get older. Look back at what you've done. But when you're 13, 14, it really... No, I really don't. Then when you get older, you see, trying to be a grown man and stuff, you just, you just look back and like, dang. Man. Were you guys both in gangs on the outside? No. No. That's rare. Most of the kids we talk to here, isn't it? Huh? 
Kids don't want to come here. They don't know what it's like until they come. A lot of kids out there wouldn't make it in here. What's it take to make it here? I don't know how to explain it. A lot of people that don't make it in here is because they're trying to go home and stuff, so they don't be trying to fight and stuff. So they get their food took and stuff. And that's why I've been here so long, because I wasn't going for it, and that's why I ain't went home yet. Well, I'm, I'm doing good now, besides this little stuff going to say it. I don't know what I did yet, but. So I think a lot of people on the outside would say, just do the program, don't fight. Get through as fast as you can. Are you saying it's not that easy? Yeah, it's hard not to fight in here. So what's, what's your hope out of the end of all this? What, what do you think is going to happen next? What do you hope happens? Mm -hmm. I hope that I learned my lesson from this and I won't come back. Once I'm old. You're hoping what? I learned my lesson from it. I've been here long enough to sit with How you feeling? Yeah. What would you, did you have family at home that you're going to go home to? Or where yeah, were you? I'm going to my grandma. Going home to your grandma? Mm -hmm. So have you lived with her most of the time? Or? Yeah. Yeah, she raised you? Yeah. Are your parents in the picture at all? Oh, uh, they both died. Your parents both died? Mm -hmm. When you were younger? Yeah, I was about 12. Really? Do you think that had something to do with why you started getting in trouble? Or? That's when I started doing drugs, yeah. Really? Yeah. As early as 12 you were doing drugs? Mm hmm yeah. Was he young? Mm -hmm. What would you want to say about living a life of drugs? That messes up your whole life. Once you get into drugs, you get into other more negative stuff than that. Robbing, stealing. And that's when you get locked up. And not the right thing to do with. So a lot of times drugs are at the root of the crimes. Yeah. I well, appreciate you guys talking to us. Yep. We, uh, we just, if, if you, uh, we just have to have you sign the lease for him it's okay that we talk to you. That's okay. We, we can't show anybody that doesn't want to be shown. All you have to do is just your signature right there. So when's your scheduled release date? You know? There's, I know it's indeterminate sentences here, right? Because yeah, I did have a DT, a determined sentence. We get released in two years, but then they pulled my DT when I started acting enough when I first got here. So now I gotta just complete the program. We're about to put some scrubs on, some uh, green or uh, gray scrubs on, and go to the room until they tell us what's, what we down here for. And then we'll sit down here in the room, get our tray served to us until they serve some major on whatever happened. We plead not guilty or guilty if we did it or not. So, what was the You got your what? 
Your stocking cap.